Hi, everyone. Welcome to the March Global Leadership Meeting for Millennials in Travel. Thanks for joining us. I'm happy to be with you today to give you some updates on what's going on and look forward to hearing from each of you as well um, in each of your individual departments of the organization. So give me just a moment. I'm going to share my screen here so we can see the agenda. Uh, put it into actually i'm just going to leave it in this mode it's easier that way all right can you guys see it yes yeah perfect okay so um just a couple general updates uh that i have for you so um nashville is still trying to sort out the details for their launch event but hoping that it will take place this spring <laughs> i know they've had some some issues and been struggling to get um, partners on board but um they're working on it and they did just fill the last open position as well um, which is the events position, so that will help greatly. Um, so hopefully we have an event, uh, a launch event date for Nashville soon. Um, I also had a call with uh, several people from Houston about launching that chapter. And so we have three people that have confirmed that they'd like to be a part of that and uh, to help launch Houston Millennials and Travel. So that will be the next one. And that'll be our 10th chapter for 10 years, which is exciting. Um, so hopefully that will kind of come together in the next couple of months and then perhaps we'll do a launch event. Um, at this point, it'll probably be in early fall. Um, and then also, I just had our chapter leadership meeting. I haven't had a chance to add these notes to the agenda yet, but just had the chapter leadership meeting about an hour ago. And um, they uh, all have great events coming up. So with, and you can see those later on uh, in the agenda, they're under events. So you've got Los Angeles event on March 15th. Char Actually, it's the other way around, sorry. So it's Los Angeles is March 16th. Charleston is March 15th. Let me just fix that real quick. Um, and then uh, Vancouver for March 30th. Um, we've also got a couple events in the works for May um, and June as well. So as those come together, um, I'll be sure to keep everyone posted. I'm asking the chapters to, at the very minimum, as soon as possible, give me the date and location so that we can add a save the date to the website and to our newsletter um, and to you know try to start informing people as early as possible. But they have all been pretty good about trying to get these events rolled out at least at the very least 30 days in advance. So um, we're, we're working on getting things on the calendar sooner. Um, Josh, you and I just discussed this about Tourism Australia and Destination New South Wales. They have a FAM to uh, Sydney in June for the Vivid Sydney event, which is like a really cool light display that they do on the Sydney Opera House um, and like different light uh, kind of like light artist um, light installation events throughout Sydney um, and so they've held two spots just for millennials and travel members so I'm working with them on um, some sort of a collaboration that's going to be really just focused on social media and perhaps inclusion in our newsletter if we can get it in time um, whereas people if they're a member of millennials and travel could qualify to participate in this fam which is going to take place in June so um, Natalie I'll keep you posted on that I'm still just waiting for Destination New South Wales to come back with more details so that we can kind of put that together and, and promote it. Um, and then under global events, the only real update I have for that is that um, we'll, we should have an events manager soon. Um, I found someone, I just need to connect with her and kind of start the onboarding process and, and get her going on helping us with some of our events that will happen outside of the chapter events. So that'll include um, our pop-up events. Right now, we've got a lot of interest in Atlanta and Austin for pop-up events. So people that have already raised their ha hand and said they'll organize it, they'll help, um, but I just need you know, an extra set of hands on board to kind of help uh, manage that from, from the organization level. So um, hopefully we have her on board soon. She can help with some of these pop-up events with the intention that hopefully those pop-up events lead to, you know, a new chapter in those cities, um, primarily Atlanta. Yeah. Um, do we have, I wonder if it would be beneficial for us to have like just some type of document, like if somebody expressed interest in a pop-up event, mm -hmm. we can, instead of like having a conversation, it's like, a, hey, this is what it looks like. This is what we need, to like yeah. Free up some time, and then also like with the chapters in the past, the the bottleneck has generally been the the event space hosting. 
is that where the bottleneck is in getting this out there still, or is there a new bottleneck that we need to address? As like far for, as you like, mean like for Nashville and like why there's been a delay? Um, not necessarily new chapters because that's a whole new thing, but I think current yeah. chapters like where where's the struggle is it no i mean honestly it... the chap the chapters are all doing really well we haven't seen events from chicago in a while because right honestly they were they're down to a team of one and carson you know wasn't gonna take that on on his own but now we have a team of four we're just in the process of onboarding the other three people so there's a little bit of delay from them new york is doing regular events and again you know we're asking each chapter to just do a quarterly event LA is the exception where they've got like, you know, monthly opportunities coming their way. So they're saying yes to them. Um, but the other chapters, Charleston, New York, San Diego, you know, they admitted, admittedly were struggling a bit. They didn't have very good attendance for their last event. So they're going to regroup. But again, you know, at one point it was just Janelle and now we're back up to a team mm -hmm. of three. So really it's just, um, I think, I think once they actually reach out to the venues and and especially a lot of them have been partnering with other suppliers that are that are you know either in mm -hmm. the area or coming to town and want to do events they're they're doing a great job there's no there's no delay so Vancouver maybe that's um, something we maybe that's something that we not like a pop-up event but maybe it we're a little bit more strategic in the suppliers that are in millennials and travel of saying yeah, it's we've talked about this before. It's just, it's just, it just never happened. So, but I mean, well, I mean, I think lots of them. I mean, I think not even like emailing them or, or but like including in the newsletter of saying like, because mm -hmm. we do say like, are you interested in hosting an event? But it's like, eh, like you know, are you coming to these cities as a supplier? Like, you know, interested in? Yeah, make it know, like a more. Maybe it could be um, just a little more strategic. Like in a future newsletter, like part of the the intro paragraph that. And, and even just to highlight some of the other right. partnership events it, that we've done in other cities. And I think also maybe talking to each of the chapter, and I don't want to say it's like a form, but like, I'm sure they all have different reasons as to what the struggle is. New York, it is often, you know, a venue space. Mm -hmm. um, it might be different in other cities. So if we can understand like where the challenges are from mm -hmm. their perspective, then we yeah. can try to mitigate that and if there's a if there's a commonality in it of like there's oh, not I'm having to like honestly okay. there's not I mean I have a monthly call with all of the chapters so I, I yeah. know what their issues are and what their hurdles are there isn't a commonality there isn't a common thread there's not something and it's the same thing with like fans like I want to identify what's the problem so that we can sure. fix it but there really isn't a singular problem that we can fix um each yeah. city's a little bit different but no I mean they're 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 doing regular events. Okay. If they if they did more events, I probably wouldn't be able to keep up with yeah, yeah. Uh, the tasks involved. Well, then, so, that's, then that's then that's a then that's a bottleneck, and that's what I want to address. <laughs> that is, is like, the bottleneck. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that it is. I'm just saying yeah. like if if yeah, let's just figure out where that bottleneck is and yeah, try to get in front of it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I mean, like I if think, they if they need like a if they, you know, I think they have. I mean, I think it's one of the forms of like a template to like email properties or something. Yeah, no, but we, I they do have think all that, of that. Yeah, I do think that if we if we are proactive at a national level, targeting the sixty two percent suppliers that are in our network, of mm -hmm. saying like, are you do, or if you're coming to the city, like we'd love to. What if we said use the word co-host? So, it, mm -hmm. so it makes it seem like we're willing to like put it not necessarily money, but we're willing to put in like time and energy, which we're going to do the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, it, it's a little bit. Yeah. We could even, um, and I know Kelly's not on here, so I don't want to make this decision for her, but the, the March newsletter hasn't gone out yet. We could even tweak because she includes a really great photo from the LA event, from the arrow event. Mm -hmm. Um, so we could even just adjust the intro paragraph a little bit to, to start. We could do, you know, some outreach to just to the suppliers in our database. But just to start in our newsletter, we could say, you know, highlight the fact that the, that was like a co-hosted event with Arrow and with Lina and Travel. Great, yeah. And then say, if you're interested, you know, to contact us. So let but me. I, um, I think we need to remind people where, we, like, you know, we, we have chapters in these cities. Yep. So if you're planning on doing a sale, sales call, and we can yep. even call attention to like, hey, suppliers, blah, blah, blah. if we like directly address them, the alternative that we could think about doing, Monica, mm -hmm. is segmenting the newsletter and doing two different no. intros. No. 
<laughs> I, it's no I, all I'm all I'm I don't saying is that it's <laughs> just a couple buttons to where we send one newsletter to to advisors and one newsletter to everyone else. We just change well because I mean I don't know if it, does anyone else have feedback on that idea. I think I, I get what you're saying. It makes sense, but I think too, um, it's good for advisors to know like. Oh, you, you, they might be talking to a supplier and they might say to that supplier, oh, you should partner with millennials and travel on, a, on an event. You know, like it's good that they know that that's an op- option, that's, an opportunity. That's, optim- that's optimistic. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, maybe, Anyone? maybe even, maybe even some like social posts or something like that. Um, yeah. Like, you know, did, you know, and I think that with this being our 10th year, like, let's call attention to the fact that, like, we've been around for 10 years, remind people that, like, by the end of the year, we're going to have 10 chapters. And, like, if you're visiting these cities, you know, on sales calls or for, for an event, because there's, you know, other events. And that's, I think, if somebody comes to us and says, oh, I'm going to be at the Travel and Adventure Show in Boston, you know, I... I, I I'd love to, like, you know, do, you know, do an event, like... If we explain the process to them in an easier way of saying mm-hmm. we have we have people all over the, the the globe, but really let's just say North America, um, and you know we're we're more than happy to co-host mm-hmm. um, an event in in any any major or any metropolitan city. Yeah. Okay. And if they come back and they're like, we want to do Tulsa. And we're like, oh, we only have 10 people. <laughs> that's like, that's fine. But yeah, I think we need to have more clear direction on that. If that's where, if that's the direction we want to go and then it's manageable. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. Anything, anyone else have feedback? I'll put some thoughts down and maybe kind of write out some some language that could be something we could use for social something in the newsletter um and then create a document that kind of explains like i i know we have the document for like how to for our like potential sponsors for events um yeah we also i also created a separate like template that they've been referring more to post pandemic because it's you know how our events have shifted so much to be a little bit more of like a hybrid a little less like over the top F and B um, and a little bit more modified events so we might need to just update those documents entirely mm-hmm. yeah okay I'll get you to help me with that too okay thanks um so after events let's see fam so we've got the Charleston and Wild Dunes fam happening right now um and we have several different fam opportunities that we can take advantage of. I, I just recently did a survey with um, just getting some feedback and, in, you know, input from other people on fams just so that we could be a little bit more strategic with the fams that we're going out with, what people are looking for, the time of year that works best for them, and kind of some of the hurdles that um, are, that, you know, advisors are up against when selecting if they can participate in fams. So that information was helpful. Helpful. I just um, exported and like kind of organized it also. I need to meet with Kim and Abby later this week to go over that to see what we're going to, which fans we're going to pursue moving forward. Um, but we have five really great fans offered to us by Alberge, which would be great. They're all like incredible hotels, beautiful properties. Um, Belmond, of course, has brought a couple other fans our way. And then also um, Muse Collection. We're talking about doing either Spain or um, Madeira and Portugal. So those will hopefully come together. Um, and then I know we still have like the South Africa fam in the pipeline for later this year and a few so others. I think that um, that I think is going to be postponed until next year. Oh, you think so? Okay. <clears throat> not from not from our not from our perspective. Um, from from there, yeah. There's just a there. Yeah. Okay. I will make note of that. Thanks. Um, um, but we still got plenty of other opportunities. Yeah, we, can look we into. also did we finalize our take on COVID and fams? Um, yes, I think we um, were just removing the requirements, and I mean, and kind of if the destination requires it, that's another story, obviously. But um, that's what that's what I think we decided to do moving forward. Okay, so we need to update all of our documents accordingly. Yeah, I think a lot of things have been updated, but yes. 
Well, like in the participation form, we ask, like they have to submit their COVID vaccination card. Oh, I thought I asked you to remove that already. Maybe I did. Okay, <laughs> I think you did. Because <laughs> we just collected all this information for Charleston and I don't think they had to upload it for that. Okay. So I, I don't think I, I had definitely haven't edited like the terms and conditions and waiver and stuff. Okay, I will. Um, I will assign that task to you. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's move on then. Um, membership over to you, Kate. Yeah, just um, stats for last month per usual, um, 3,344 people in the database, 28 paid members, and we had 17 who added um, registration to an event, which again was really high, not quite as high as January, but I think was still like the second highest Oops. that we had. Um, and then, yeah, um, LA usually tops the list. So obviously with all LA events and things, lots of people adding 17 people, um, signed up in LA. Then the second most was kind of the New York, New Jersey area. Um, I kind of just combine it because some people put LaGuardia, JFK, New York, whatever. Um, in Santa Barbara, you had four people at Montecito Village Travel <laughs> sign up. Um, then three people in San Diego, two in Vancouver, two in Chicago, and one each. Um, no one else, no one international, but yeah, all over the U.S. Orange County, San Francisco, Seattle, Dallas, San Antonio, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Indianapolis, Nashville, Charleston, Richmond, and Baltimore. Um, Do you think we should ask people why they're signing up? Like in the form, like add a... That'd be yeah. a good way to like a free kind of start to pinpoint what people's like, interests are. And like, are they, yeah, like, are they signing up because they want to attend an event? Or are they signing up because they, they want to go on a fam or they want to apply for a job? Or, yeah, like, I, I mean, we, we, this is like really the first time we're having this conversation about it. Mm -hmm. Um, but figuring out why, I mean, I don't want to like draw attention, I don't want to like question them signing up. Like, you know make what I mean? like, 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 but why yeah. not ask why I want to sign up? But so, like, why is like, someone in Des Moines signing up for membership? Like, there, if there's no chapter there, yeah. Like, what, what are they looking to get out of it? Because I don't want to like overpromise and underdeliver. Not yeah. that we're going to be like, hey, no, this isn't right for you. But like, we we don't have that many refund requests though. So I I don't want to like you know. I don't know. What are what everybody else's thoughts on like, do we, well, I think if we ask like, that, is this going to like make them question themselves? No, I mean, I think it's more, I don't think it's going to make them question it. Like, I, I think that's a very valid question when you're signing up for something like it's, it's, if we word it in a way where we're trying to figure out what they're hoping to get out of it, like, why are you signing? Like, what are you, what so is it are a, you hoping? Is, is it a check? And that's information that we've been wanting to gather anyways. Yeah. Do we do a checkbox where people can select more than one option? Are mm -hmm. we? Yeah, because okay, then we so know we, to... we know what the most important reasons are, and then that helps us right. define so what like, we do going attend forward. Attend events, attend in a fam, feel a part of a community, mm -hmm. um, establish myself as you know a professional. Like let's let's think about some brainstorm. Options. Okay, brainstorm. Yeah, yeah, that's Kate, sounds... Kate. I'm gonna I'm gonna can you I'm gonna yeah. can yeah, you yeah. do that? Cool. <laughs> yes. You guys still finish each other's sentences. It's so great. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I will get on that. I will figure that out, get some options going, and then we can circle back on that. Um, okay, cool. And then, yeah, uh, the other thing, no exclusive benefits manager right now. I, I will be honest, I have not done a lot of it. We do have one yeah. new potential option. Um, someone who used to work in travel, but now works in um, banking and like private equity. So like figure it could be helpful just in general, like, hey, how to set up a 401k? Why have a 401k? All those kinds of financial questions, I think, especially for like ICs could be really helpful. Um, but Monica and I are going to take that discussion offline and figure that out if we want. Yeah, that's been put on, put, been put on like the back, back, back yeah. burner. Yeah. <laughs> Not, not, yeah, not, um, yeah. Like a major, two but we do need to get back to the benefits. Cause I, I do think it's like one of the, one of the areas that's underserved where we could really add value. And in fact, I had a call with the call with the officers today 
Um, you know, LA reminded me that there's that um, uh, discounted hotel rate that any member of Millennials in Travel can take advantage of for the entire year. At, um, and that right. should be that That's, should be added yeah. to our benefits page. Yeah. I think, and maybe what we do is that's another, maybe next month we, um, you know, that's the focus of the newsletter of saying like, you know, do you want to offer, you know, something unique to the membership, like regardless of whether they're a, you know, advisor or not. Mm -hmm. We have it at the bottom, but again, like nobody's reading below the fold in the newsletter. Yeah, and we need to, like, well, it gives us, it gives us like content, content ideas for the intro, which is great. So yeah. And on the social side, I did add it um, when that came out, I added it as a permanent link, a different link than the uh, event, the LA event, but it's a mm-hmm. different link under the link tree. So at least it's living there. So if people are clicking okay. that bio, it says MIT members, Hotel Parla 2023 booking link. So very clear, has nothing to do with a specific event, but at least that's living. In okay. The- and, um, yeah, I think the rate is like 225 or 240 or something. So it's pretty good. Okay. Oops. Okay. Um, and then before we jump over to um, jobs, just I added a couple of notes here, which pertain to the database and, um, and uh, membership. Um, what's our plan with like Purging the database, we keep saying that we're going to do it, and we we don't we haven't, and so I'm just wondering what the plan is and like the rollout for that, and then also what we're doing for like membership renewals. You know, it's tough because I keep getting caught in these interviews where they're like, "How many members do you have?" And I'm like, "Uh, over three thousand." But then we like, you know, purge, and then we're down to like, I, I don't even know what we're gonna what would be down to. Yeah, but it would be clean and then we'll build it up from there, right? Is the idea. I mean, I think it's an ever changing, like, like we're always going to have to, like, what, what is it? Like, have you not opened up an email in a year? And then we, we do this every, you know, every quarter. We go back and say, if they've not opened up an email in a year, purge them. Mm-hmm. Like, what are those terms? Natalie, what's your take on it? <laughs> I think you're the master behind this. I don't know. I think, um, <laughs> listen, I don't know. I don't um, know. Not from, not from like a, like, you know, the numbers is numbers is numbers like that, but like it is a year. Yeah. Like if they haven't opened up our emails yes. in a year. Yes. If you I haven't worn that piece of clothing in two years, donate. Yeah. No, I think like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very fair. Clearly, if they haven't opened something up in a year, I don't think they have any intentions. In the t- it's like one of those things, you know, how Gmail will be like, are you still interested? Like you haven't opened up from such and such and X right. months. So I think that's fair to say. Remove them, right? I think okay. that's what you're going to be able to clean out, I think. Or else you're just going to have all these idle people just stacking up. I'll do it. I'll do it tonight. I'll purge the database. Josh is like, don't tempt me with a hey, I mean, we- look at it and see what, what it looks like. Or can we run the yeah. list first of those people? And at yeah. Least send sh- send yeah. it to me and Kate to look at. To, sure. Because if, I mean, I'm what not, if we I'm find someone gonna... on there? What if we find someone on there that's like, no, they're totally actively involved. They're attending right. events. It's just ending up in their spam and they've never opened the Or email. it's like an email address they're not checking. Like it could be, yeah. you know, it could be one that they use to sign up and like. Yeah. And now they don't use it. Like I, like I had a Yahoo forever and finally was one of the right. last people to get a Gmail. And so now I rarely check my Yahoo. I and, still yeah. use Yahoo. Yeah. You, I thought you were on AOL, Josh. <laughs> yes. It's uh, dot AIM. <laughs> oh my God. You guys don't even know what AIM is. Yes, I do. Uh, yes, I do. I have a, I have a okay. dot okay. AIM. Okay. I have a okay. Comcast okay. net. My first email was Comcast.net. <laughs> oh my, <God. laughs> um, my, my AOL email address uh, was J Smith 80. Just yeah. to let you know. Like that's how I was super. You were like, one I of the originals that you could still get like that. 1980, like 88, I think is when I got an AOL email address. Oh, I love that for you. That's awesome. Um, Stay tuned okay, for more so, updates from geriatric millennials. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no it's elder millennials. We, elder millennials. We, well, <laughs> on, our, uh, you know, on a call a couple weeks ago, we talked about having starting to segment our database into mm-hmm. like three different tiers 
of like what you know one to five years in the industry five to 15 and then plus 15 like those that are the millennials that have been in the industry for 15 plus years like myself and monica are we our needs are very different amanda you too oh yeah cool 85 um, baby <laughs> <laughs> are very it's very different than those that have been in the industry for one to five years uh, and you know so like you know how can we be moving into like the the vp role whereas mm -hmm. a millennial who's four years into the industry they're like i want to be a manager so it's it's i think we're starting we're gonna have to start segmenting how we approach our organization and and figure out like let's find needs for each group mm -hmm. and start to target those needs and we've identified also like markets and things like that so i think over the next like two months we'll kind of be like sharing more direction on like where we want and try to get feedback on where we want millennials and travel to go because it is changing we're not the little guy anymore we're you know a third to maybe even a half of not a half at least a third of the population in the travel space <clears throat> and yeah we need to 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 uh revitalize the organization mm -hmm. okay so send me the per the purge list is what we'll call it so send me that okay. list that we would essentially be would you mind dropping that into in sauna oh i oh i i got a list of things for you don't worry thanks and then also, um, what are we doing about renewals? Because I know we don't get a lot of questions about it, but we do get every once in a while. Like, I, I think, I, I think I'm, and someone even said the other day, I can't remember, I was on a, oh, I think it was the Miami call. Like they told people like, oh, you'll get an automatic notification after one year to sign up. And I was like, no, no you won't. <laughs> I was just like behind the scenes on, as like the tech person to make sure nothing crashed for them yeah. while they were like doing the event. So, and I was manning the chat. So I didn't want to be like, no, they're wrong. They're lying. Um, <laughs> but people are expecting that. Um, so what do we well, want to do I, about that? I mean, I think right now it, it, it's only, it's a missed opportunity if we don't. I think, yes, I don't think it's exactly. hurting us. So yeah. I think let's focus on the reactive. Let's let's address all the okay. reactive things, issues that we have, and then we can focus on being proactive. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. All right, back up to professional development. Hi, Amanda. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm the work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for our meeting after this on Asana. I feel like yeah. I'm failing Asana terribly, and I apologize, Joss. I feel like I'm. Failing you with putting stuff on a sauna, so <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> no, it'll be good when okay. we have this meeting and just you know a refresh on like how because a sauna is one of those things where yeah, it's like it's kind of your enemy until it clicks, and then you're like, oh my god, it's my best friend, and I can't live without it kind of thing. So um, once you start using it, like and and it it helps you, it like will streamline the process and make it easier. So we'll have a, a meeting after that, and we'll go over kind of the job board and how to how to um, use Asana more effectively. Um, yeah. And then I, I do don't want know to put, can... oh, sorry. Yeah, go oh. ahead. I know that we talked about in a couple of meetings of putting like stuff on social media. So mm -hmm. I've just been like looking at just adding like it to put on social media, but then if it like doesn't make sense, like that's fine. But I feel like just to like put it out there. We, should. You, we should be, we should be promoting like all of these job yeah. opportunities on social media for sure. And Amanda, I'll show you that that step is already built into the template in Asana. So all you have okay. to do is update the information and assign it to Natalie and she'll, she'll take it from there. Yeah. Um, and I've done a few generic stories, but I do have it in to start. I was just making sure that like everything was up to date before I started like pushing, like I haven't put that to the, I havenven't added that job board link to Linktree yet because I just wanted to make sure like it was good, you know, jobs were updated. Okay. Once I get that green light, I'll put in a static post, like, you know, click the link in bio. And then, you know, if, if like a job, I mean, we can even do it. Yeah. How as often as a new job is put on there, that could absolutely be a story. I don't know that that would be a static post because that, you know, that's, that would be a little bit sure much, I think. Yeah. But if you do, you know, that's not to say you don't do we don't do two static job posts a month and then supplemental stories as we have new positions. So, I mean, we can always do as many stories. Like there's no limit on Instagram stories. It's, you know, they're up for 24 hours, add it to the highlight, done. 
Um, I would vote for. I would vote for not putting job posts uh, as static, just because then specific like, jobs. Unless you're, gonna, yeah. unless you're gonna remove it at some yeah. point, it's like it yeah. becomes obsolete. No, it could be more of a generic, like job, like did you know, uh, like one of those, okay. like yeah. you know, okay, like a cool. did you know, you know, refer to the link. Like about a new, it. a new one, like South African tourism is hiring a uh, trade relations so officer. Um, it expire. It, the job post ends in ten days. I'm mm -hmm. in South Africa. I could be like, you know, walking on, you know, the promenade and like with lion's head behind me and be like, hey, wanna, I don't know. So I could, do, I could, I'm volunteering to do a story, Let's but get you a sandwich board yeah. and uh, some flyers <laughs> or, or one of those things. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. And no, sometimes I, there's like stuff that pops up that's like, uh, a, like a virtual like job event that so it's like time sensitive so I think that mm -hmm. putting that on like social media is good because it's like coming up like hey did you know this is happening next Tuesday or whatever it is then that's just kind of a better way to push it because I think on the page sometimes that can get like yeah oh yeah no we wouldn't put like quick yeah yeah, we, yeah. You know, we wouldn't put like quick things like that like things that are time sensitive. I mean and Natalie correct me if I'm wrong but I feel like anything that's going to live for it forever on our social media so like as a post should be like things that are millenn millennials and travel exclusive or like our events our fans our things maybe yeah. right things and then that, like things, things that are fleeting that are or are in support of another partner would be more to like more geared on stories like better yeah. on stories Correct. yeah okay mm -hmm. okay cool yeah, there's so, other like, timely jobs just put in a sauna, sign it to me. I'll make sure I get up. I can get those stories up very quickly. So, yeah. So Amanda, we'll go after this. We'll go over um, on a sauna. It's like that's like I think the key to everything, and that's how things will happen quickly and and how we can be more effective. So we'll, yes, we'll circle back on that. Okay, good. Perfect. So then switching gears to communications. Um, so our our newsletter is scheduled to go out this Wednesday. Um, I'll make you know some of the slight adjustments that we just talked about today, and then I think it's pretty good to go other than needing to resize the photo. Um, Kelly's on the fam right now, which is great. She's, she's um, you know, a, a freelance writer. And so she has said that she's pretty much open and willing and wanting to go on as many fams as possible. So I actually had her create a document that's like a, a bio, a profile of um, writers or media people with them millennials and travel. So far, she's the only one on it. Um, but it's a really great document because we can send it out to the fam partners, the suppliers that are going to host the fam and say, would you like to include a member, you know, of media on the fam? Here's a bio um, and all of the, like, the publications that she'll pitch a story to. So um, I'm glad that we're kind of, you know, formalizing that a little bit more and kind of getting, you know, creating a more uh, a better program for that and more opportunities to send someone from, are we, from media. Are but if we, anyone knows anyone else that we would want, you know, maybe want to consider adding to that. Are we going saying. to have any mention in those said articles if it's trade related? If it's consumer, doesn't matter. But if it's trade related? Yeah, I, th I would think so. I think they're all, I think the, the, um, maybe Natalie knows because you know. Are you talking about articles that Kelly's writing or? Yeah, it would, is it more like. I think consumer? it depends on the, I think it depends on the story, what the editor, like what the assignment is, you know, it has to make sense, I think. Yeah. She'll always plug MIT, I mean, speaking okay. of her, she'll always plug when she can, but you know, sometimes they have very specific parameters, like you're writing about X thing, like, you of know, very, and you know, maybe she'll put it in and like her editor, her uh, copy editor will yeah, take yeah. it goes yeah. yeah but um yeah I no. think if it's a trade publication she yeah I mention it but I think she's doing a lot of like you know luxury lifestyle consumer totally no I mean that's I, I yeah. don't expect that by any means yeah. Yeah. no but I mean it's been great I was actually going to talk about this and I, I'm not jumping ahead Monica but Go I was, ahead. No, I, that's it. so she was um she's been going to a lot of local um she's been like invited to a lot of grand openings and stuff in uh you know her local area in Nashville and it was really cool to see so she's very close with one of the main eater I believe she's the I don't think she's editor-in-chief of Nashville Eater but she's very high up her name's Delia Joe but we got a follow from her after Kelly was at an event with her it was the Jean George she went to his like new um restaurant but very cool Delia uh started following us so that was cool so I think it's just it's opening up a whole you know a whole new web of of contacts and I mean she has almost 26,000 followers uh, that writer and she's very connected with eater so it's just cool it's cool to see like I think this was yeah. an 
we've never, I mean, I've only been a part of MIT what, for five, six years now, but it's cool to see that it can open up to this like whole new world of like, oh yeah, Definitely. writers, travel, like it can kind of all, you know, people finding interest, what's millennials and travel. So I thought oh, that I was so no. Mon, should we forward Natalie the that um that guy in LA who keeps reaching out for like oh god who where is he from? Like, Wait, are you Mon talking about <clears throat> Montel Williams or whatever? Montel Williams? I what are you talking no. about? <clears throat> he's from he's a publication. That, no, no, it's like a TV show They're in like local areas. They want like. Um, I don't know. I'll forward you the left. Yes, the <laughs> latest email. Okay. <laughs> Got it. I, I just like right love seeing this like, sure. synergy. I just love seeing the synergy though within the communications team. It's I, I don't think we've ever really had that with like yeah, like media tied to social media and digital. And no. It's, yeah. It's great. So it's cool. So great to have you both on the team. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited for Kelly. You know, she she and the other thing too is like if we're ever in a bind and don't have a host, you know, she can double as media and the host. So it's great. It's a win-win for everyone. She gets the opportunity to travel, gets she gets content to write about, and then it's supporting millennials and travel too. So it's great. Um, great. So Natalie, do you want to give us your update? Yeah. So I don't have any updates, if any updates, for um, on the Malin media relations front. Um, I did leave in the January stats. I'm going to start leaving in the prior month just so we nice. can see our growth, but I did pull February's Instagram stats looking great across the board. Um, we were up on accounts reached, accounts engaged. I won't go through all the specifics. Um, our impressions went up, followers went up significantly, which I know that was also due to the help of, I can't remember his name, Josh, but I know you're Maybe. at Maybe. Nazon. Nazon. Um, so that was awesome. Uh, we only have 170 to go to meet our goal this year, which I know we're going to surpass um, to get to 3,000. Is that our goal? I'm blanking. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. 3,000. And um, yeah, so we're just, I mean, we're up in all numbers. It's been great to see, you know, what. If there's anything that you need also from like, uh, you know, here's a list of, of like something that's admin related with yeah. social like let me know sure. and like he can yeah. go through it i mean does he have time yeah he has like time on his hands okay cool yeah i mean we we we, we can i mean he he works for me full-time and i've said like i can release him for like 15 hours a week to millennials and travel awesome. um so yeah it's okay great whatever I'll let you know. I think we're good. You know, we're just trying, I'm, I'm really making it a point this year. Again, I said this on our last call and also the chapter call Monica when I jumped in, but really just trying to eliminate, like when people get on our page, I don't want it to be salesy. I don't want it to be advertising. You know, I want it to be like beautiful destinations, beautiful content. But when you click into those things, there's all different, you know, is this a fam? Are we talking about jobs? But like, I think it's just very important. I think this role has been switched around so much and, you know, it kind of the flow is, mm -hmm. you know, ebbs and flow, like the look and, but just really trying to, you know, utilize video, post a mix of video, static, uh, static photos, get stories up. So, you know, I think we've seen the content. I mean, the numbers speak for itself. So it's mm -hmm. very exciting to see it just continually go up. Um, but yeah, it's been fun to see like what's engaging really well, what people are enjoying. You know, we get a ton of DMs, a lot of messages. So I can see how many different stories have been forwarded, which those numbers are up. Um, so yeah, I mean, just really good things across the board on social. That's so, so great. And congratulations. Every, too. <clears throat> yeah, this is awesome. Um, maybe like once a quarter or something is, do you think it would be possible to like your insight as to why things are happening? Like, like what, why like, is something performing better? Like kind of pull like top posts, maybe like what performed best? Um, not necessarily like the, like you. I, I want to get like inside. I want to get inside your brain and for you to like say like this is why this is happening. Does that <laughs> make sense? Like, but are you saying in terms of like engagement, like why something's like doing engagement? Stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm happy to pull like trends. Maybe I pull like kind of what's been performing best. It doesn't have to be nitty gritty, but like what respond, what did people respond to the most in Q1 or Q2, you know, whatever. That I guess not the actual post, but like the, you know, the medium or like because of like the visuality, I don't know why I'm putting ality on a lot of things tonight. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, but then also I think like maybe there's maybe that's something like the members would would be interested in knowing 
and like maybe there's like a blog post or something of like you know this is how this is how you do it like from our perspective not from like uh you know searching like how are you talking like social color? media 101 like if kelly were to do like a blog post or like something like why social media is so important in the travel industry how people not, are like not like why but like how because so when we had a when we had a call with asta like they're doing they're only doing two fans this year with their young profession society and one of them is solely focused on i, sh I need to be quiet I, there's other people sleeping in this place um one of them is on like how to increase like engagement um not that i want to like trump them because they're not doing that till july but like just like i think that i think that it was an interesting read it's something that i would want to know from like my travel agency perspective of like how do i increase engagement um but I mean, we're showing, you're showing success in what's happening. And A, I want to share that. B, I want to understand why so we can do more, better, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think I understand. <laughs> I think I understand where you're coming from. And yes, I have welcome to my world. There's no <laughs> Monica, please interpret Josh speak for us. <laughs> I, do, I know, I've been trying to um, perfect that language for years. <laughs> So funny and I can connect with Kelly too and we can yeah okay I'll get, I'll reach out Josh if I have any more questions but yes uh, I think I understand where you're going with this I think okay <laughs> good and um Natalie from a like more of a um, process standpoint is everything working with how it's coming to you yeah. on the sauna and the yep. dates and I noticed what you're doing with the events which is great where you're making yes. three subtasks so yep. I'm ignoring it if it's checked off and being like wait I haven't seen it yet because I see that you have totally like three but I, I can I will leave like the main one I'm starting to put the main one as That's like fine. the actual event dates like the events happening on the 16th I'll leave that okay. on the 16th but then and do you, you know. want me to assign a date to you when I when I when I assign it to you or if I just assign it to you you'll no, see it when you like you were saying when you assign it to me put it as like the next day but like okay. you know just you'll so reassign. it doesn't go lost yeah and I'll reassign and go in I've been going in like every week and kind of reassigning so okay and I know um and I know we've got a backlog of pipeline full yes. of yes. membership or uh, leadership spotlights to do yes we're okay. good with that we probably have like I think we have at least six seven more Okay. Uh, so yeah. I told all of the chapter officers today that they need to each start um, providing con providing one social spotlight a month. Um, just I'm, I'm trying to drill that in because I know it'll take yeah. a long time before that picks yeah. up. So we'll right. have these six or seven left and then and and I've set the criteria like it has to be a dues paying member and somebody that you've vetted that you know would represent the organization well that deserves to be spotlighted and featured yeah. on our social media. Um, so they, they know that. So hopefully we'll start to see some of those, um, come awesome. in and also that, um, I've asked them to also make sure they're signing up for at least one takeover a month. So that would, Great. I mean, yeah, if no, they all did it, that would be 10 takeovers a month. Sheet looks never good. Happen, I think we can definitely, like you said, like there's people are doing takeovers for fans and events, but like mm -hmm. the more the merrier. Like I posted one of Kelly's reels from Barcelona the other day, right? Mm -hmm. Like, those are great. Like it's fun. And, you know, and I think maybe that's something you even say for like your next chapter meeting, or I'm happy to join. It's like, have you taken amazing content? Are you, yeah. you know, is there anything that you've already done and posted that like you would be okay with us reposting? Like that kind of thing. Because I think so many of them do, do such a great job because that's their mm -hmm. own travel whatever it is channel um mm -hmm. but why not you know don't reinvent the wheel if they already have these beautiful videos and reels posted yeah as well reshare what, like know. those switzerland ones those were like so breathtaking too oh i know who is who is saver away oh, or saver saver travels um i'd have to look up i, okay. I can't her remember off the top photos of my head, are she's great i mean her yeah. photos and videos are beautiful i've only communicated with her in the dms but she yeah. put such great content on that fam yeah she did um, a great job yeah what's the frequency Sorry. on the member spotlight member spotlight i'm trying for at least two a month um okay. just so because it's the people's pictures i don't want it to be where it's like i'm trying to be like sporadic um, yeah so are we doing that as um a static posts yes okay I know you're not on Instagram, but if you want to take a look and well, I know you are. No, He's on I, Instagram, I, not on Facebook. Not actively <laughs> looking. Um, yeah, actually I haven't. 
And it's a, um, it's a difference though. It's different though, right? It's members. I mean, it's the same form now. It's called a social yeah. spotlight, yeah. but it's either a member or leaders. So it's yes. our leaders that are. Yeah. yeah. The leader spotlight is what Monica. But the, well, have, like, the, the, the leader spotlights are the one that have the static posts. Yes. Right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And like, if it's a Question. member, that would just be stories. Probably. If they're no longer a leader, do we remove them? If they're no, oh, I no. mean, yes, we should be. Um, I'm happy to go back and do a look like the last three, four months, if you want. I mean, I'm, I'm, these are, I'm just like, these are hypothetical. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. Um, <clears throat> yes, we should be, but at the same time, you know, you have people. I just don't, I just don't want our time. I just don't want our page to just be like all these people. And <laughs> it's not. I'm trying. I, no, it's not. If you take a look, I'm people. being yeah, very I'm careful. looking at it right now. It looks like there's a really big mix. It's mostly like. Let me log on. All right, everyone. <clears throat> From critique. Everyone give your thoughts. <laughs> no, I'm trying. But Josh, that's exactly why I'm trying to only do a few months so that we have enough yeah. other things sprinkled in where you're not just on the Instagram and it's like person, person, person. What is this? Like, right. you know, it's very like, and it's clear, like in the graphics, it's like leader spotlight. So if people are looking right away, they're like, oh, this looks like a spotlight. Let's I mean, I think leaders is fine. I think if we got into like member spotlight. <clears throat> and those were static those posts. could just be stories those could be stories yeah we haven't done any yeah. of those yet, so i'm happy to we've got we have i'm just looking at facebook um we have one on september 12th of last year um that was a membership monday post um and that was it that i see the other ones are all leaders running it what <laughs> membership monday this was the pre prior social media manager because now natalie's created like really great template uh not template but you know a really great aesthetic it's like really beautiful and like the same format for each one yeah but yeah all the other ones i see are are, are leaders so cool. oh god <clears throat> This photo of Kim is like giant and blurry. I know. Be. I cringed when I saw it go up way back. <laughs> and the one yeah, before we... that, actually, Jessica Jankowski on July 12th is no longer part of the team. So you might want to pull that one. But um, okay. I know it can, we can still update those photos, right? If we have a better photo of Kim. Oh, yeah. I'm sh definitely. I'm happy to redo that. I them. think it's the same one. And move, remove on Emma Hart or... on June 14th also. Yeah, I can do that. She promoted herself there before other people, which is interesting. I'm sure there's a lot, honestly, that are probably on here that the, haven't. So the, that's no, those are the only one. Oh, wait, here's one more. The one for, it's the same picture that Kim has on the website and it's. Okay. Yeah. Kim, when you watch photo. this recording, we need a new photo. <laughs> 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 we'll see if she watches the recording now, right? Please and thank you. Hidden message. Yeah. Um. I'll 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 send her a message. Um. Poor thing has a senior dog that they have to be putting down this week, so she is dealing with that. I know. Now I just made everyone sad. Um. So also, there's one. Um. Natalie, May twenty fourth. Um. It was posted. It's Amanda with San Diego. She's gone. But all the other ones are fine. Oh wait, no. Here's another. <laughs> I know. I think I think okay. it's a little tricky. I think we go yeah. back like so many months, but then after that, we just assume people aren't scrolling all the way back to the beginning of time. They're not stalking us. To, I didn't no. mean. But to this is just Pandora's last year. Box. I'm looking just last Gosh. year. <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> just last year. So okay. No, I'm well, happy. To, I, I can I, remove from the last year. That's totally. I, fine. Yeah, yeah. I, do, I mean, I, I can just remove that, them too. Yeah. I do think that this. I can have Nathan remove it too. I do think that the. This brings up a, a point as far as like what is our strategy and like do we things that they're they could become obsolete like maybe we just don't include them as a static post which resides forever it's up to you guys i mean i don't think it's the worst no you're it's, it's no it's, i I, I think we I, because then I mean I'm just asking I, think the question. I'm not I think it's nice to humanize the page and kind of yeah. put people to names to, you know I don't I think it's fine that's just the nature okay, of cool. you know posting about an exec chef and then he's gone you know in yeah. five months for a hotel 
um, I think it's totally fine. And it kind of brings context to who we are. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That, yeah. Plus like anything eventually that works obsolete, for me, right? Like a benefit eventually goes totally. away. A job, Everything uh, will have an expiration. An event, an event yeah. happens exactly. and then that's gone. So right. yeah, I think it's, the, I think if it's like something that we own, right? Like it's one of our leaders, one of our events, one of our fans, one of our benefits, right? Then we make it a static post. But if it's a membership spotlight, a job opportunity, things that aren't yes. owned by millennials. So if the, so if the, the, if the benefit expires, and it's no longer valid, do we leave it on? I mean, we're not posting very specific benefits. If anything, it would yeah, be like- The last like, one we posted was- We have benefits, like- April. Okay, okay, okay. Do that kind of thing. And again, I'm not saying one way or another. I'm just asking questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything will expire. Everything. We will all expire. <laughs> um, <laughs> God, I went dark again. Jeez. Um, wow. Now we're getting into like existential uh, <laughs> conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but I think I do think like we should yeah we should definitely be using our social media though to promote like jobs and, and like specific jobs and specific benefits but whether that's stories or you know static posts I leave up to the expert Natalie <laughs> cool. sounds good I'm about to expire <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah sorry let's move yeah. along then Okay, so, and thank you for these stats. They all look really positive, which is fantastic. Yeah. All right, Josh, we made you stay on to the very end. So over to you, please. Um, we're updated on the trademark. Um, but we had some like tax issues that were not our fault, but those are resolved. Can you just tell, just so that everybody knows like the trademark, like what do we have trademarked? Millennials and travel. Okay, I don't know if everybody knows that. Oh, I yeah. That. I kind I of know. figured at this point. <laughs> I would have hoped. Well, it was it was hard. Uh, it was we were hard. denied, and then I I peeled. Really? God. Yeah. You can't you can't combine the this these. They're very two general yeah. terms. You can't combine yeah. them. That's not trademarkable. But then mm. they approved women of color in education, mm. and I got them. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. Um, I used that in my appeal. It was a, like a. 22 month process but it um and we had our we used to renew between years five and six nine and ten Got 19 it. and 20 but oh, so we just did good. our we just did our five to six renewal uh, renewal um yeah all good on taxes um and then i liaised with um yes yeah, so if you guys see ever like the words like i've only found in one news article was millennials and travel and i wasn't gonna like fight it whatever but like we own that, those three words together in that uh, order. Um, mm -hmm. Then, yeah, I did leave with um, sequence, um, maybe possible benefit, po possible focus group for them, possible, they may want to do some like pop-up event, blah, blah, blah. Everyone doesn't uh, know what sequence is. Can you tell us what um, it is? It's like a sauna for travel agents. Hmm basically okay. um yeah um just some like tech stuff that i've been working on and like logistical operational shit probably shouldn't swear um <laughs> uh philanthropy and outreach not sure um for caroline relations and advocacy you know talking to a couple different people um organizations see what makes sense um, and this really goes back to, you know, we need to, we have three pillars that we want to focus on. Members themselves, is it something that's going to benefit the membership? The industry itself is it going to benefit the industry and millennial from travel. Is it going to benefit us as far as being sustainable as, a, as an organization? So we're expanding our, you know, are we going to put time and energy into something if it makes sense benefiting one of those three pillars? Um, and then like allocate resources accordingly for that. But we'll, you know, we're just talking over the next several months to figure out like what is that new direction and then how do we segment our own database to understand the needs of our members, which is ever changing, the needs of the industry, which is also ever changing, and then ourselves. So um yeah. Um I have a question. Energy, every, yeah. I have a question about relations and advocacy, um, specifically ASTA. The call I had with the chapter officers, um, Phoenix is wanting to, they've already 
started talking with two ASTA board members. So they, people that don't work for ASTA, they're just on the board that live in the Phoenix yeah. Scottsdale area. And they have their big event in July called like Fiesta in the Desert. And they really want to do a joint event, but they weren't sure how to proceed, if they can do it. So I wasn't sure where things were at with the conversations with ASTA um, and how to like best guide them on. There's a ASTA and then there's like the YPS, which is not dissolving, but it's, it's probably taking new shape over the next couple months. Okay. Um, I, I don't know what they're planning on doing. I mean, they're, they're just not going to be as active in the marketplace as YPS. They kind of just want to utilize us um, for that. My experience with past, we've done, we've done co-hosted events with ASTA before. And mm -hmm. my experience in that was that it was not extremely beneficial mm -hmm. that was eight years ago though i yeah. mean it was a long time again where changed a where little bit can, especially in the last few years right where you yeah. could, i mean you could clearly see the divide and it's they only formed with us then because we they announced an event we announced the event the same day and then like yeah. people like deregistered from their event and wanted to come to ours like millennials and they were like okay we but it just wasn't a good event. I didn't, um, but again, yeah, we'll, um, you know, touch base okay. and see what they think. Okay. So should I tell them to just proceed or? Um, I mean, what, I guess context, like, is it ASTA? Because I, the reason that ASTA is coming to Millennial, the ASTA board members are coming to Millennial Travel is because they don't want their event to be just all old people, period. Mm -hmm. I think that's the idea. The, right. And, and I would <laughs> yeah. be doing I mean, the I think that's thing. the idea behind this event, too. We'll be doing the same thing in 30 years, you know? So sure. 20 years, 15 years. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> God, that's depressing. I don't know. Um, I mean, co-hosting an event, I would not, I would say let don't put don't put your energy into it okay. um promoting promoting their event to the local membership or the local mit people sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay i don't want to i don't want to get in i don't want to get into i don't want to get into like a solid bed with asta yet because i don't know yeah what that looks like okay they were gonna <clears throat> schedule a call with me to kind of go over more details so i'll I'll try to get some more inform information. I, yeah, I mean, we're going to be and we're going to be continually getting these requests. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we already are. Like, I mean, you know, oh, you know, that's why we're becoming more popular every year mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. people want mm -hmm. to be a part of it and they want access to our members. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, and anything else? No. No. Okay. Well, thank you all. Have thank a great you. rest thank of your morning.